Okay. Uh, uh, I think that the subject content knowledge is um, uh, quite an issue in uh, the job that we are doing. So um, I will um, focus on it uh, for in this talk because it is one of the most uh, distinguished uh, features um, of LSP. So um, let me now um, give you the overview of my talk. Um, first, I'm going to uh, talk about a few major points um, on the um, LSP complexity. Uh, then uh, I will um, um, focus on the multiple roles handled by LSP practitioners. Uh, then um, uh, my um, general, uh, then I will um, talk about the uh, discursive competence as a general concept that conjoins uh, the linguistic behavior and the professional professional expertise. So um, the second part of, of my talk uh, is devoted to subject content knowledge. Uh, I won't try, of course, to answer how much subject content knowledge an LSP uh, practitioner um, needs but rather to throw some light uh, on its role in LSP instruction. Um, after a brief outline of uh, the aims and methodology of the survey um, I conducted in September last year, uh, the results will be presented to show LSP teachers view on subject knowledge and their experience of teaching um, LSP. And of course, following the uh, short dis uh, discussion, I will finish my talk uh, with a few concluding marks and of course, welcoming your questions. So um, given a great abundance of uh, literature on teaching LSP, only an extract of theories and studies um, having immediate relevance to our central topic will be mentioned. LSP um, as a field of applied linguistics uh, dates to early 90s in works of Halliday, Stravans, um, and Macintosh, for example. It has its origins and main incentive in English for specific purposes, as the uh, vast majority of the language analysis and instruction that has been done in LSP has focused on English. So accordingly, much of the theoretical foundation for LSP grew out of research in English for specific purposes. Therefore, um, in its essence, uh, the rationale for ESP applies to LSP as well. Uh, the most influential works were written by Hutchinson and Waters, uh, Dudley Evans and St. John. We all know that. Uh, the development of the LSP field uh, has been substantially driven by the internationalization of science, industry, and business, as well as by various economic trends. Uh, there is a general consensus uh, among scholars that LSP courses are those in which the methodology, the content, the objectives, the materials, the teaching, and the assessment practices, they all relate to specific target language uses based on an identified set of specialized needs. Common examples of LSP include courses like um, English for, for the financial sector, Spanish for doctors, Italian for tourism, English for air traffic controllers, or German for business communication, just to mention a few. In each of these cases, uh, the content and focus of the language instruction is narrowed to a specific context 
of a particular set of tasks and skills. Stravens, Dudley Evans, and St. John and Anthony define ESP in terms of absolute and variable characteristics. The task of the ESP teacher is to ensure that all the absolute characteristics and as many as possible of the variable characteristics are contained in an, an, uh, an uh, ESP or LSP course. As um, Hutchinson and Waters emphasize, uh, needs analysis should be the fundamental principle on which the ESP approach is based. Since LSP teaching uh, aims at helping students enter particular discourse communities, its methodology draws on relevant activities and practices. For this reason, central LSP concerns include uh, the role of discipline knowledge, specialized discourse, as well as the genre typically used by the discourse communities. For example, a business person um, needs to participate in various work situations, uh, meetings, um, it, uh, he, he or she needs to negotiate, present projects, write various letters such as inquiries or order confirmations. So therefore, the development of a syllabus and teaching materials will definitely depend on analysis of the key genres that have been identified. Similarly, um, Jones uh, and Dudley Evans describe needs analysis as one of the um, two absolute characteristics of, ES of LSP, the other being discourse analysis. Discourse analysis and its main branch in ESP, genre analysis, is the natural development uh, of needs analysis. The main argument in favor of the use of genre analysis in teaching LSP is that it provides non-native speakers with the linguistic and rhetorical tools they need to cope with the tasks required of them. Teaching uh, LSP has been exhibited both um, a wide disciplinary diversity and a narrow specificity. The expansion and advancements in science, technology and economy have turned the world into an interconnected global system which requires international communication skills, most notably the proficiency in the English language as lingua franca. This resulted in the enormous range of domains, scientific disciplines or professions that needed an appropriate language instruction. To address these needs, um, the number of LSP courses offered at the tertiary level increased significantly. The uh, scope of this instruction has been the language used in registers and genres from a particular profession or academic discipline, such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, biochemistry, law, just to mention a few, of course. So um, in order to teach authentic language needed in specialized communication in, in target workplace settings, a particular extract of language needed to be identified as the subject of LSP course. This gave rise to various definition of the concepts of special language. The uh, term special language offered by Sager applies to experts to expert communication and texts used in the instructions of special subjects. 
Picht and um, Drasko um, suggested a more comprehensive definition uh, pointing to specialist nature of information and the exact, clear, and explicit nature of that information. The most recent definition is also given in the international standard ISO 1087, published in 2019. All these definitions, all three definitions, contain three common terms used for defining the concept of special language. They are expert communication, specific linguistic model, and specific context or domain. So uh, this concept of uh, special language and a wide variety of domains imply also the notion of specificity. Uh, the uh, level of specificity in ESP instruction has been a controversial issue since its inception. Almost 30 years ago, um, Jones and Dudley Evans identified the question of how specific the focus of ESP course should be. Jones and Dudley Evans and more recently Belcher seem to be in some middle ground on the debate on a narrow angle and a wide angle perspective. According to Highland, our yesterday's keynote speaker, the notion of specificity is a concept fundamental to most definitions of ESP. Bas Turkman shares his view by noting that the teaching of English for occupational and professional purposes has by nature always been highly specific. Uh, to illustrate these distinguishing features, uh, we may have a look at an extract of language. One of the striking examples is the term consideration. Uh, in general English, uh, the term consideration means a careful thought, an opinion, or a judgment. But due to its highly con uh, uh, conditioned and context-dependent meaning, this term presents special difficulty for the students in legal English. I can witness this, that, that for, uh, from my own experience. Another good example is the term provision. Used in the three different domains, general, legal, and English for accounting and finance, it represents a completely different concept in each of the disciplines. A different meanings or distinct semantic value of a term is established on the basis of its relationship to a specific conceptual system. In other words, Teams, uh, terms, sorry, terms independent conceptual status is attached to its semantic value. Therefore, it could, it could be argued that LSP practitioners do need some knowledge about, uh, above the context level and encompassing an epistemological approach. So, the, um, the physical, the, the philosophical basis also of that discipline. Um, now I'd uh, like to turn to the role of LSP practitioners, uh, keeping in mind uh, a variety of LSP teaching aspects. Uh, practitioners um, are challenged to tackle a series of issues, as you know, as you know from your own experience. Uh, Stravens claims that becoming an effective teacher of ESP requires more experience, additional training, extra effort, a fresh commitment compared with being a teacher of general English. Um, not much has changed uh, since Dudley Evans and St. John identified a set 
of LSP practitioners' roles. Uh, this set includes in particular, the role of a teacher, course designer, materials provider, collaborator, evaluator, also a researcher. Very often a teacher's role, a teacher's role goes beyond teaching and facilitating language learning. LSP practitioner needs to be more than a language expert. As jack of all trades, LSP practitioner has a competent grasp of many skill, skills. Sorry. More recently, however, the role of LSP practitioner calls for the increased use of digital technology to enhance teaching and learning. The networked teacher in a digital area efficiently uses digital resources, attends conference as we do today, produces curriculum documents, prepares video conferencing as we do today, blogs, podcasts, Post it, uh, he posts or she posts material or social network sites and does many, many other things. Um, to, wrap up, um, um, to wrap up the presented brief overview of the manifold LSP practitioners' roles, we need to look at the role of discursive competence in practitioners' expertise. Without going further in the stages of LSP development, I would focus on the two stages uh, in which, uh, two stages of development, in which attention was shifted to the level above the sentence, identifying a more focused methodology for text analysis, and then in later works, placing an emphasis on context rather than text. Uh, the uh, approach referred to as genre analysis uh, developed by Swales and Batya in the early 90s has proved uh, particularly useful in LSP, furthering uh, the practices um, in language teaching and learning. Examining genres in uh, professional contexts uh, allows teachers to address a number of fundamental principles of LSP course design. Teachers uh, provide students uh, with um, access to a particular language model, and they also raise their consciousness of how language is used. Uh, the focus on uh, genres also sensitizes learners to the need to understand the rhetorical demands of communicative situations in a range of specific domains. In line uh, with the developments in genre theory, LSP as specific purpose-driven teaching focuses on the acquisition of professional expertise. According to Batya and Anthony, the professional expertise includes discursive competence, disciplinary knowledge, and professional practice in a complex and dynamic socio-pragmatic space. In this professional setting, various forms of specialized communication take place. Therefore, um, an effective integration of these three aspects is and should be the ultimate aim of all forms of acquisition of academic or professional expertise in any ESP context. Batya uh, goes further and defines discursive competence as a general concept to cover various levels of competence we all need in order to expertly operate within well-defined professional as well as general sociocultural contexts. He also identifies 
three levels that constitute the discursive competence, namely textual competence, generic competence, and social competence. It is worth observing that only one type of competence is predominantly text internal or language related. Although Bhatia terms these constituents levels, they are complementary to each other and overlap. Textual competence incorporates both the linguistic competence and some aspects of the communicative competence. Generic competence is the ability to identify, construct, interpret, and success successfully exploit a specific repertoire of professional disciplinary workplace genres to participate in the daily activities and to achieve the goals of a specific professional community. The third constituent, social competence, or level at which discursive competence can operate, uh, it is social one, which incorporates an ability to use language more widely to participate effectively in a variety of social and institutional contexts. Um, that brings me now to the next part uh, of my talk and the issue of uh, subject content knowledge. Uh, specificity and authenticity as the um, two key concepts in LSP imply the use of authentic texts and uh, as genre models. A text serves two roles here. It is a means of constructing specialized areas of knowledge and it is a means of language instruction. Hutchinson and Waters early on observed that ESP teachers often teach with texts whose uh, content they know little or nothing about. This sentence has been cited, uh, quoted very, very often. This gives rise to the question of what subject knowledge an LSP teacher should possess. Although subject content knowledge has been a, a rather controversial issue, there is a general agreement in the literature in favor of possessing subject knowledge. For example, in 1983, you were suggested that the ESP teacher should be willing to acquire the intelligent layman's outline knowledge of the disciplines his students are studying. Adam Smith advised that the teacher does not necessarily need to able, uh, need not to be able to grasp a whole subject, but needs to keep an open mind and an interest in the subject area. Myers, focusing on the text, argued that in a scientific discourse, some of the cohesive ties in the text are left implicit and they can, they can only be reconstructed by a person possessing specialist background knowledge. Uh, based on our experience, um, I dare say uh, we can well agree with Myers, Holiday and Martin, uh, who pointed to the interrelatedness between the text and specialist uh, knowledge in that uh, comprehension of the text is facilitated by specialist knowledge and hindered by its absence. According to Ferguson, what ESP practitioners actually need is knowledge about an area, that is its values and preferred genres rather than in-depth knowledge of an area. As one of the few scholars to address this issue directly, Ferguson uh, distinguishes between specialized knowledge and specialist knowledge. 
Specialist knowledge refers to knowledge of the content of the student's discipline or subject. Specialized knowledge involves three related elements, a form of knowledge philosophical in nature, knowledge of genre and discourse, or more precisely, genre and discourse analyt uh, analytical skills. Um, um, at the same time, Dudley Evans examined the same uh, issue and made several interesting points. LSP teaching exploits a number of core scientific principles to present the core language, core technical language of academic or professional communication. Uh, in order to exploit uh, these situations fully, one needs to have a full understanding of the content. Um, this also implies uh, that the teacher should draw on the student's knowledge of that content. And uh, in order to prompt students to communicate about the situation, a teacher needs to understand the situation itself fairly fully. In respect of the subject content knowledge, um, Dudley Evans and St. John make the distinction between carrier content and real content. Carrier content is a stock of shared knowledge and concepts, for example, the life cycle of a plant, it is an um, authentic topic that can be used as a vehicle for the real content of the teaching unit. Uh, the real content of the teaching unit is the language scientists use to describe processes, cycles, principles, or concepts. Uh, the points they are making uh, is clearly manifested in their remark that uh, business people do not expect a business English teacher to know how to run a business, but rather they expect knowledge of how language is used in business. Um, rather convincing argument um, regarding the subject and content dilemma was presented by Bas Turkman. The findings of the study she conducted in a cooperation with Boca Negra Valle highlight that ESP teachers view the subject content knowledge as essential. As Basterkman further reports, um, such knowledge was easier to acquire in some domains than others. To acquire the background knowledge in teaching English for tourism was regarded easy, whereas a teacher of English for law reported the um, necessity for acquiring the various kinds of knowledge among which are the language of the law, the situations that language is used in, um, the way a court works, um, and the different types of crimes. Uh, the complexity of the notion of subject content dilemma becomes increasingly apparent if a specific LSP course is analyzed in detail. Two examples uh, would perfectly serve to illustrate this point. At its core, uh, both examples draw on the authenticity of the text used. First, uh, let us stay in the domain of legal English mentioned in the Barstukman and Boca Negra Valle research study. In the uh, in the legal English class, uh, teachers are, are very often use an authentic legal case report. Legal cases um, have a particular function in the legal discourse community. Hence, uh, in Ferguson's view, 
which many of us agree with, um, LSP teachers should have knowledge of the status and roles of different kinds of text within the discourse community. It also helps if teachers understand how particular meanings are textualized at lower lexicogrammatical levels. The second example refers to terms in natural sciences and engineering. Bernoulli's theorem and Bernoulli's law are terms that are strict synonyms in English, also, al although uh, they can be used interchangeably in all sentence contexts, they are also ambiguous terms. Two denominators with the same surname denote different concepts, that is, different theorems theorems uh, and laws. As Kerekovic correctly observed, the context, but also the background knowledge, the content knowledge, will eliminate ambiguity and make it clear whether it is Bernoulli's theorem or law in hydrodynamics, named after Daniel Bernoulli, or Bernoulli's theorem or law of large numbers in mathematics, named after Jacob Bernoulli. Therefore, it can be argued that the LSP teacher should distinguish between different types of concepts or categories. Now that we've covered the theoretical part, I'd like to show you the results of a small study I conducted um, in September last year. My point of departure when designing uh, the survey was the assumption that LSP teachers need domain-specific knowledge in order to help students develop competencies needed to understand and produce texts appropriate to discursive practices and that it has that this knowledge has considerable significance for teaching LSP. So the aim of the study was uh, to explore LSP teachers views regarding the challenges they faced in LSP teaching and how they made an effective transition from general language teaching to LSP teaching. Second, the aim was to explore LSP teachers' views regarding the importance of subject content knowledge and how LSP teachers acquire and improve their subject content knowledge. A research instrument used uh, was a questionnaire I designed based on my teaching experience and uh, driven by a wish to examine LSP teachers' views and experiences. It consists of 11 questions, 60 items, and a set of standard demographic data. The survey was conducted online by means of Google Docs. The research sample was a convenience one and included 169 um, LSP teachers from 14 countries. The majority participants are from Croatia, then from Serbia, Slovenia, Czech Republic, Russia, and others as well. At this point, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all colleagues who participated in the, in the survey. Thank you very much. Uh, the following slides present the LSP teachers' replies to a couple of survey questions. We don't have the time to present all of the results. A few initial questions refer to the present and past teaching. In respect of professional experience, as 46% um, of teachers reported to have more than 15 years of experience in LSP teaching, and 27% to have 10 to 15 years experience. Since these two groups constitute more than two thirds of the sample, 
it may be concluded that most of the teachers are highly experienced. It is also worth noting that before embarking on LSP teaching, 90% of the teachers had taught general foreign language, among which one third had taught at a higher education institution. Asked about their initial language education, more than 90% of the teachers reported to have had no courses on LSP teaching. If we return to the earlier point, we can notice a direct correlation between the type of the first job and the education program. Thus, 90% had taught general language prior to the embarking on LSP teaching and more than 90% had had no adequate or specialized education for teachers. Therefore, a vast majority of teachers change over to LSP teaching sometime later in their professional career. So a uh, while later, we will discuss the challenges teachers um, had faced at that transition. The um, next question examines the reasons behind the decision to teach LSP. Uh, the respondents um, were asked uh, to choose all the answers that apply. Among offered items, as you can see, teaching at a higher education institution offers possibilities for continuous professional development was the most frequently chosen one. More than half of the respondents perceived teaching at the tertiary level as an exciting challenge. Slightly fewer than half of the respondents regarded teaching LSP as very interesting. As you can see from the diagram, working hours, teachers' status and salary are ranked next among the offered at the lower level of the scale. Uh, these results uh, can also be identified as um, indicators of teachers' character and motivation for the job. It could uh, be argued that uh, teachers are driven uh, by internal rewards. Uh, that is, they are intrinsically motivated they enjoy teaching and see it as an opportunity for further development and actualization. The um, next thing I was interested to know uh, was how LSP teachers developed their expertise at the beginning or during their professional career. From the eight options available, uh, the respondents were offered to choose as many as they deemed appropriate. Um, given the limited provision of LSP teacher specialized education, uh, the most common self-development activity uh, was um, studying research on learning and teaching LSP. This item was selected by 143 respondents. Slightly fewer of the teachers 136 uh, shared experience with LSP colleagues. No less important uh, was participation in conferences, a collaboration with colleagues teaching discipline-based uh, subject, participating in training, workshops and seminars, as well as talking or working with respective field specialists are reported as resources not so often exploited. According to these answers, the respondents um, finding themselves in an uncharted land, as Hutchinson and Waters call it, undertake a set of self-development activities to improve their skills and cater uh, for students' needs. Uh, as we all know, LSP teaching can be both uh, demanding and rewarding. In this respect, teachers were asked to specify the level of difficulty 
they have experienced during teaching practices uh, related to specialized challenges uh, or situations or spe specified or specific challenges or situations. The level of difficulty of each item was rated on a five Likert scale, ranging from str strongly disagree to strongly agree. The um, 11 items uh, contained um, student-related, job-related, and teacher-related aspects. For example, students' different language proficiency, inadequate teaching materials, or lack of formal specialized education. Uh, to present the respondents' views, uh, the value for each items, item was obtained by calculating the mean, which was then used for compiling a ranking list. Uh, for LSP teachers, a major area of difficulty is found in students' different language proficiency. Too many teaching hours, however, cause the least stress to the teachers. In view of these results, it seems reasonable to conclude that teachers are hardworking professionals who can cope with workloads. It can further be argued that these results bespeak of teachers' character profile and their devotion to teaching. Another matter worth uh, noting is that the item, the lack of specialist contact knowledge, was ranked second. So, 52 respondents perceived the lack of specialist content knowledge as an area of very high difficulty. Slightly fewer respondents, 47, regarded it quite demanding as they selected option level four on the scale. Less than one third, 26%, were in some middle ground on the scale and 15.4% found it not to be a trying aspect. Accordingly, more than half of the respondents regarded the lack of specialist content knowledge as challenging. So 58.6% of respondents. Another focus of the study was uh, to find out the level um, of the respondents' agreement on the uh, usefulness of specialist content knowledge. According to the replies, uh, specialist content knowledge was deemed useful for the LSP teaching uh, by more than 85% of the respondents. Only two respondents strongly disagreed with this statement. Uh, these findings are consistent with the research assumptions about the role and significance of content knowledge in teaching LSP. They also confirm the findings reported in Basturkman's study, according to which um, uh, ESP teachers viewed this kind of knowledge as essential, and I will quote, you have to have knowledge of the subject. Uh, the respondents also reported on how they acquired subject content knowledge. The most frequently chosen activity to develop expertise in a given LSP was reading textbooks, books of published articles in a foreign language taught. Reading news, press releases, and articles in domain-specific journals was ranked second. Talking to colleagues who teach discipline-based subject was a common activity for 130 respondents, rather high percentage. Reading textbooks related to professional disciplines in the mother tongue was also highly represented. Next of the scale listed um, toward the bottom are uh, watching videos, talking to friends who work in the profession in questions, reading course books their students read, and other activities. 
Given these results, it may be highlighted that LSP teachers acquire content knowledge through a set of self-development activities. Having presented an extract of the study results, I've come to the last part of my talk where I'd like to recap the main points. It is common knowledge that a needs analysis uh, is a fundamental principle of LSP. Accordingly, LSP teaching aims at helping students enter particular discourse communities. And with this end in view, LSP teachers adapt methodology for different teaching situations. Central to the LSP teaching are special language, the role of discipline knowledge, specialized discourse, as well as designers used by the these by the discourse communities. Despite the fact that LSP teachers are offered rather scarce special, specialized education, they take up a challenge to teach at LSP. Finding themselves in a job situation they were not trained to, the teachers continuously improve their skills and knowledge through a wide variety of self-development activities. For the most of the respondents, the knowledge of student specialism is undoubtedly important and of great help in teaching LSP. The use of different activities and strategies to acquire, they use, sorry, they use, the teachers use different activities and strategies to acquire the knowledge of a given subject area. LSP teachers don't develop into a subject matter expert, but clearly need at least some basic knowledge of a relevant content area. Be it as it may, the comprehension of the text is facilitated by content knowledge. Language and content are closely linked together and we cannot have one without the other. I would like to conclude by saying that LSP teachers are passionate, dedicated, and hardworking professionals. And as engineers of the mind, they touch the lives of their students forever. This brings me to the end of my talk. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, of course, I'll be glad to answer them.